Welcome to Shannon's Design to Driveway. I'm Warren Brown and I'm joined by motor historian David Burrell as together we celebrate some of the most prominent Australian car designers. Like any young car designer, David Hardy relished the opportunity to work on an all new model. The brief was to create an Australian made family car that would take on the heavyweights of Ford and Holden. The company was Leyland Australia and the car was the P76. Now, David was witness to the birth of the P76, a car voted Car of the Year by Wheels magazine, and the super coupe that Australia never got, the Force 7. As we've come to know, the Leyland P76 is largely defined by perception and myth. When Leyland manufacturing closed, David moved into industrial and appliance design for the next 30 years. Did the P76 kill the company, or did Leyland kill the car? I'm really excited to find out as David Burrell speaks with the man who was on the design studio floor at the time. I'd been drawing cars passionately for about the previous three years. My father, he was chief body engineer at uh, BMC. He had been, unbeknownst to me, impressed with some of the, the things that I'd been drawing. And um, they were trying to redesign the front of the Austin A60 um, into what eventually became the um, Austin Freeway. He said, I want you to do it. put a new front on this for me and uh, uh, it might uh, give the guys in styling a, you know, a new direction. Well, I was just completely blown away and I, I, I produced about six uh, um, options and gave them to him and he took them. Now, I don't even know if he showed them, but the fact that he'd asked me just made me think, yes, 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 so I'm a designer. From then on, that's all I ever wanted to do. My dad um, um, got me into BMC as a late entrance into their um, apprenticeship scheme. And uh, so I started as an apprentice fitter and machinist. I was working in a car factory uh, and I got to know Romer Rodberg, who was my first boss in styling and, and my mentor. He believed in me and uh, pushed me and pushed me. Romer Rodberg was a passionate, fiery sort of character. Um, he, I, I liked him um, because uh, I admired his contempt for authority. I was given responsibility for choosing colours and, uh, and naming them, which I enjoyed doing. Well, one of my favourite ones uh, didn't actually get to, the, uh, get to production, but it was called Great Balls of Fire. Uh, it was a bright orange colour and uh, the funny story is that the, the paint company said it was too long to fit on the can, the name. So I, uh, so I changed it to Fireball Orange. The first thing I remember doing uh, that actually made it to production was I did a rendering of a grill badge and I was pleased to punch because there was something came out of my head. The, the cars that, that BMC and Leyland had been making up to that point didn't really um, conform to what the Australian, the bulk of the Australian car buying public wanted, um, and that was you know, the 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 uh, the Holden, the Falcon, and the Chrysler, which was large, um, six seater as they called it then. You know, large engine, uh, capable of carrying a family and all their luggage over long distances. It was seen by the company hierarchy that we needed to do something different to keep hold of the, or to, to, to really um, have a place in the Australian market um, be, and still make a profit. Uh, the cars had been selling reasonably well up to then but were losing money. It started with um, a small group of a team of people called the Advanced Model Group <coughs> who were um, headed by my father, Graham Hardy. He was given the responsibility for the uh, conceiving the body part of it. When they decided that they wanted to actually design a car around that, 
they then started looking to um, overseas. Uh, there was the Longridge Studios in England, uh, of, of Leyland. In Turin there was um, the uh, Atal design. When all these drawings were put together um, and uh, for some choice to be made, Romit had been working on his own ideas without, any, without being asked to and uh, he put his ideas up on the board along with all the others. And uh, so Roman said, well, uh, you might like to look at these ones as well. And uh, in the end, they decided that they were the ones that f best fitted the bill. I remember being amazed and really impressed that this guy had been managed to do that without being asked to um, and pushing it through um, and um, he, he, he basically snuck it past my father and the other people of, of Leyland Engineering and it was the, the marketing and sales and English um, people that, that agreed that that best fitted the bill and they decided that Roman would make um, some models um, of his ideas um, and uh, they would be taken to Italy. They then decided that they... That of course, that our department was so small and ill-equipped that it couldn't handle a project of that size. So they uh, they decided to take it to Michelotti, but with Roman um, on board to work with Michelotti to refine the whole thing. And what you end up seeing with the, the P76 and the um, Force 7 is um, Michelotti's uh, work of finishing off what Roman had already done. Um, whereas uh, he, uh, Roman, got hardly any um, credit at all for what he had done. Um, he came back from Italy very, very unhappy. What you should understand is that the um, P76 was approved by management on the basis of photographs of quarter scale models, which is ridiculous. Um, but that's what they did. Um, and uh, so they had all these models set up for photography uh, the next day. And uh, when Roman came in that morning, found that uh, his model, all the paint had completely peeled off. It was completely ruined. And it wasn't considered as a, as a candidate. Uh, and told me never to tell anybody that he thought this, but here I am telling you. Um, he believed that Michelotti's men sabotaged it that with solvent or something because he couldn't see how the paint would have come off on its own. This revelation confirms what has been suspected for many years. The P-76 could have looked more appealing. As we know, Roman left the company upon his return from Italy and never returned to car design. The HQ Holden is regarded still and was then as, as a, a beautiful piece of, of car design. I, I thought so when it came out, I still do. It was the same dimensions, uh, the, all the, the, the key dimensions of length, um, overall length, overall width, track, wheelbase, height, everything was all pretty much the same and yet the HQ looks um, well proportioned, it, looks, it sits nicely on its wheels. The P76 um, appears to be too big for its wheels. It boils down to one thing, that the wheel arch flares on the HQ Holden, they start from the top and they get about halfway down and then they melt into the body sides. On the P76, that's how they were on the original quarter scale model, which was approved. Somewhere between there and the uh, full-scale model, somebody decided the uh, wheel arch flares now go all the way to the bottom. And from anything less than a slight angle um, of a three-quarter front view, you can't see the wheels. A car should look like it's planted on the ground, on the road, and should look stable. The P76 doesn't, and that's the basic reason simple fact that the wheel arch, arch flares have been taken all the way to the bottom of the wheel arch and not cut into the sides. Sounds silly, but that's what it is. 
How easy is it to make or break a car with simple design flaws? Holder made the same error with the HD and Chrysler with the VH Valiant. Hidden wheel arches create a top heavy appearance, sales are impacted, the bottom line's reduced. The cavernous boot um, is uh, the result of a part of one of the requirements of the uh, advanced model group when planning the car right from the beginning was to have a totally usable large boot um, with and, and part of that was um, a requirement to have the spare wheel mounted upright also without an external bulge uh, and that sort of started to dictate the height of the um, the top of the boot lid which I never saw as a great problem I thought the problem was the uh, the treatment that they the surface treatment of the boot lid I think they could have done that a lot better uh, and I think they were somehow trying to disguise its size. Uh, somehow they managed to make it worse. They being uh, the engineering people combined with the people in Turin. Those two things, the wheel arch flares and the boot lid shape, are the, the main things that caused the public to um, dislike the P76. The parent company was so cash strapped, they were going under in the UK. Um, they said, no, you've got to get these onto the market. We've got to have some money coming in now. So they were shoved out onto the market before they were ready. And uh, what was unknown at the time was the mistakes had been made in the design of the jigs that held the body panels together uh, while they were being spot welded, and um, which caused them to be under undue stress or to be slightly out of alignment and um, doors didn't fit their apertures properly uh, and um, things like the, st the stainless steel moulding around the windscreen which was held on by clips it was known to actually fly off if the car was it went over a bump silly things like that they, they put in a whole a program uh, of this design to investigate everything that was wrong with the car. So the cars they were building at the time of um, uh, the close down were, were of good quality. The car that went in the rally, they brought, uh, they brought it into uh, our styling department. So I put this um, spear shaped uh, metallic blue and gold stripe down the side with, uh, with Australia and a Southern Cross on it. In my mind, this was golden stars in the night sky. And um, the idea was that this car was going to be going all over Europe and um, everybody would know where the car came from. It had Southern Cross and the uh, uh, Australia on the side. The World Cup rally is a high point in the P76 story, carrying David's bespoke livery. It confirms that, once sorted, the P76 lived up to Leyland's expectations. Leyland also had lofty aspirations for the 4.7. It's, it's quite impressive, but what we could have had was something totally unique. It wouldn't have looked like anything else. You wouldn't have compared it to anything. Instead of sloping um, under, it sloped forward. Uh, the, the top edge was um, back from the bottom edge, so the whole thing had this scooped shovel kind of effect. and. Um, combined with um, uh, nostrils. Roman did the rest of the body. To me, the, the 47 body looks great, but it would have been heaps better if the wheels were bigger. But that was part of the, the, the initial um, body design of the, as it was planned and the, the hard points. They were hoping eventually that the um, 47 would, would be a Bathurst winner. They, they genuinely believed that. Yes. Um, it would have happened, but uh, we had to stay in the game for that to happen. <laughs> and uh, history says we didn't. The, the poor old Force 7 actually never actually made it into the showrooms, in spite of the fact that they'd built something of 50 odd of them, but uh, they had, didn't have their uh, um, Australian design rules accreditation, the, the, the compliance plates. Uh, which you had to pay money to get, and seeing as the company was going under, they didn't see any point in uh, in getting that. So the cars that they had built 
um, they couldn't sell, not through the normal processes, and they so most of them were destroyed. When we first got the 4-7 uh, fiberglass model all dressed up and it was in the styling studio, and uh, uh, David Beach came over to look at it, and uh, he stood beside me and said, what do you think of it, David? And uh, I said, well, I think it'll look great with a with the, uh, the Jaguar V12 in it. And he said, oh, we'll do our own V12. It just so happened I was involved in this iconic thing. The car that uh, some people think killed the company, it was the reverse, the company killed the car. You know, I enjoyed the fact that at that young age there I was, having designed something and there it was in production. Before you sit in it, before you start the engine of a car, you're looking at it. And that, that's going to make a difference as to the way you feel about that. You know, you, if you want to drive it before you start the engine, then the designer has done something good. David Hardy really is one of the unsung heroes of Australian car design. David was right there when it all happened. His behind the scenes revelations about the P76 and the 47 and the significant role of local Australian designer Roman Rodberg serves as a rethink of the Leyland P76 for us all. But just imagine how Australian motorsport might have changed forever with a V12 of all things, 47 roaring up Mountain Strait. Not only did David help shape our automotive landscape, he influenced the ambience of most Australian family homes with his fridges and ovens. Very few can say their influence has been felt inside and outside our homes for over four decades. Thanks for watching Shannon's Design to Driveway. In this episode, it's Ford designer Graham Wadsworth on the polarising AU Falcon, how the Ford Design Studio turned the sales race around, plus Ford's motorsport heritage which inspired the design of the Falcon performance models, and in a series exclusive, top secret Aussie design Ford Mustang, the car that Ford boss Jack Nasser killed on site. Join Warren Brown and David Burrell in the new must watch series, Shannon's Design to Driveway. Watch now on the Shannons Club.